Hey guys, here are some new features for the Hard Surface add-on, JMesh Tools. Ok, first let's have a look at some drawbacks in the previous version here for the primitive mode. For example, when I draw a primitive here onto the mesh, and then I decide that I want to use a mirror, then I can't do this after I added the primitive. The option is just not there, I would have to remove the primitive again, like that, by pressing the escape key, then I have to decide that I want a mirror for the x-axis and I can paint it again. Then I can, for instance, press E to extrude and execute a boolean. Ok, but not very nice. So I decided to improve it, so that you can activate the mirror at any time, not just by pressing the M key. We can now use shape actions for this. Let me draw a rectangle onto the mesh, without a mirror activated. And now you see this shape action, the M icon, and when you press it, this overlay pops up, and you can select the axis for the mirror. The current one has an orange back color. Ok, now the mirror is added for the X axis, you can move it around, or you can center it by control clicking the arrows of the gizmo. And now let's suppose I want to cut into the mesh, but the current operation is union, and I have to press O a few times to switch to the difference operation, but this is also optimized now. You can use this shape action, the circle, and directly select the current boolean type. Then control left click and cut into the mesh. This is much faster and more intuitive. But there's more. Here's a small feature for the symmetrize modifier. As you know, we can symmetrize meshes by clicking an axis, but it is always a bit unclear if it is symmetrized to the side that I click or to the opposite. But now it is displayed here which mode is used. At the moment it is selected to opposite, so click minus Y and it is symmetrized to plus Y. You can change it in the preferences of JMesh tools. And I change it now to two selected. Then I select this object that I want to symmetrize activate the symmetrize modifier and click the Y axis. A tiny one to make things more clear. Ok, but the next one is an extreme benefit, I think. It's a usability improvement for the text box. I draw a circle now onto the mesh, then I click the shape action for the size, this one, and now I can set the radius when I type in the value into the text box, but if I don't want to change to the keyboard, I can just drag with the mouse cursor over the text box. If I drag faster, I make larger changes, and when I drag slowly, the changes are more precise. I have put quite a bit of brain into it. Please give me some feedback about the usability. The same feature can be used to set the distance for the array. You don't have to set the value, you can just drag the text box like a slider. Of course, if you want to center it afterwards, you can control click the arrow and then it is centered to the appropriate axis. Ok, then I set it to difference and control left click to cut through the mesh. Ok, the next thing that I'm planning is a complete refactoring of the vertex data structures for the primitives so that we can edit these like meshes. The add-on is now available as a product on the Blender market, but don't worry, it is free and will always be free. But when you get it here from the Blender market, you support the Blender Dev Fund and of course my channel, and you get special support. Also when you get it here from Gumroad, you can ask me anything about the add-on or if you have a problem, then just drop me a line or can create special short videos for you. Ok, that's it again, I hope you like the add-on and my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Support me by being my patron or join here as a member on YouTube. Add your feedback to the comments and I'll see you soon here on JNM.